Found my first fish. Sorry about that. I need to be more careful. Forty-eight degrees, and there's no sun on the water. So that's some interesting data. I got to start keeping track. Uh, called it. That is awesome. Oh, I wish I knew what this fly was called. Two for two on this guy. Awesome. Very nice. <laughs> he went under this rock by my feet. Cool. There's one.
another microscopic rainbow. Seriously, dude. Guess he's gone. Darn it. Get out of here. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this fishing adventure. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it. Uh, Crystal and I actually had plans to go up to McLeod River today and unfortunately we had out the door and the car started sputtering and uh, we limped it back home and it turned out we had a bad alternator so uh, I just had the worst run of bad car luck but anyway we didn't get out the door so early so we made a plan B and went up to Mill Creek instead. Heading up towards Lassen we decided to stop at the hole in the ground campground where there's about 100-150 yards of easy access to Mill Creek. Uh, there was this nice light color of fall on the trees, but it was still nice and warm. The water is really clear and low, but it was a cool 48 degrees Fahrenheit or 9 degrees Celsius, uh, so the fish activity was still nice and healthy. The road down to the campground is really easy, and you can literally park feet from the, the creek, so it's super easy and fast to get to. Since I don't really know Mill Creek that well, I decided to sort of hit all the places in the water where I would normally look for fish. And it turned out I really was only able to find them in the deeper buckets, kind of right behind rocks. Um, the creek is kind of a mix of kind of shallow rock, basically rocky river. It's not a very big creek. Um, but uh, I found there were some nice undercut banks and some nice deeper runs, but I wasn't able to pull any fish out of those spots. And I think it's because I couldn't adequately stalk the fish. They could see me coming, even though I was being very careful, trying not to make a lot of noise while wading through the water. We had just gone shopping for new flies over at the fly shop and I came home with a bunch of new really thin bodied nymph patterns. I don't really remember their exact names, but they're kind of like a pertagon, very hard, small, thin bodied, heavy, heavy bead head so it will get down nice and easy. Um, and I fished that on the dropper and on the point I fished my normal green dredge. I normally use a tan, but all I had left were greens. And uh, I caught every single fish on one of those pertagon like patterns. So uh, the fish were definitely on the small dark nymphs. I used a dark colored pattern. Sadly, none of the fish were over eight inches long. And as you saw in the video, I was calling them microscopic fish. They were just a bunch of really small fish in there. I tend to put a lot of pressure on myself. I find that if I set goals for myself, I get more work done. And that may be uh, to my downfall, but uh, I set this goal to create a video once a week uh, as sort of a simple cadence, just to see if I can find my stride and make that happen. But as because of that, on my last video at Hat Creek, link right here, uh, I, I kind of rushed through the edit and missed a couple mistakes that I, I let go through and they probably shouldn't have. Some of them I don't know what, what, what happened, but basically I didn't do a good walk through at the end and watch everything and make sure everything was clean. So this time on this edit, I'm taking a lot more time. I'm going to export it, watch it through, make sure there were no defects or glitches or anything. Uh, that I will let slip through to YouTube. It's a funny thing because once the video is done and I export it, I'm just so excited to get it on the internet and share it with you guys. So I need to show a little maturity, slow things down, and make sure it's perfect before I release it.
One thing I've noticed with tight lining, there's no indicator to sort of watch float down the river, so you can't really see where the fish is and where the eat actually happens. So I've added some arrow callouts into the video so you can see where the fish are and where they eat the fly inside under the water. So um, that's brand new and it's quite a bit of work because I'm not just adding an arrow, it's gotta be fancy. Um, but if you find value in that, let me know. And if, it, if you like it, I'll keep doing it. Otherwise, I may, uh, may or may not continue doing it in the future because it is a bit more work or Maybe it's just one of those things I just need to keep doing it and I will get better at it and it'll speed up. I often get lots of questions about my camera gear or what I'm using to fish with, so please check the description below. I've got links to all the gear I use, all fishing, all camera gear, everything I use, so check it out and you can find out everything I'm using. And if all your questions aren't answered down there, feel free to leave a comment and ask away. I love answering your questions and I do my best to get to everyone in the comments. If you like what we're doing here and you want to see what's going on in real time, please follow me up on Instagram at Eric Leslie. And there you can find things on my story and I post up adventures, little tidbits, things like what's going on with my studio here. So let's connect there and then until next time, Godspeed.